Hi guys, welcome back to Buck and Jack. I'm Adrian, and right now I'm off to go see one of my friends who's just got a new watch. It's quite a tasty one. Let's go check it out. So here it is guys, this is the Omega Seamaster Railmaster. It was launched in 2018 and Omega actually launched two of these. They launched this one and the 60th anniversary, but we're just gonna be focusing on, on, on this one today. It's a more beefy version of the original Railmaster that was launched in 1957, which was made as the kind of name suggests Railmaster. It was made for railway workers and those who worked near electrical fields. Electrical fields create uh, a magnetic field and magnets are an absolute nightmare for watches. They can cause the movement to, to operate irregularly and it can cause springs to stick to themselves. So what Omega did was they created this Railmaster which was able to withstand a magnetic field with a power of a thousand gauss, which at the time was really quite amazing. The original Railmaster is actually one of my all-time favorite watches. I absolutely love three-handed watches. And this hits all the buttons for me. Let's move on because we're now talking about the new beefy version. So this costs £3,680 in the UK. It's got a stupid Omega reference, which is 220.10.40.20.01.001. The case, it's got a 40 millimeter wide case. It's 12 millimeters thick and it's water resistant down to 150 meters. So it's really quite capable with regards to water resistance. The dial for me is kind of the, the winner here. You've also got the 3, 6, 9, 12 numerals. We've got the crosshair in the middle there. It's heavily brushed, a very, very deep brushing. All these vertical, you can kind of see them in vertical lines. Really nice to see that they've kept the original Railmaster logo because that, for me, is one of the things that absolutely stands out on the original one. Now the loom, we can't ignore the loom on this. It's, it's got a faux patina and that might not be to everyone's taste, but it is actually super luminous. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds here. You've got that vintage look, but you've actually got the functionality of it being super luminous. The 36912, I think Omega have absolutely nailed this dial, but more so they've nailed the typography. The Omega logo is, is cool anyway, but the 36912 and that Railmaster, everything just sits really well. And what I like about the 36912 is the fact that it's not the same as the original, but it has kept that curvaceous character and it's plain. There's, 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 no, there's no fanciness about it and, and I love it. I think I've absolutely nailed this. Now, I give Omega a bit of a hard time. I, I, I kind of bash them a bit. And that's mainly because they seem to be churning out watches like there's no tomorrow. And I can't help but feel that a company who designs lots of things, uh, I, I feel like that shows a weakness. I feel like there's, there's a, lack of, um, a lack of confidence in what they're doing. And a, a, kind of, a good example of this is go find out how many Speedmaster variants there are. There's loads, and there seems to be more and more coming out. However... With Omega's movements, I think they deserve a lot of praise for what they do, especially with this caliber 8806. This is a certified master chronometer approved by Metas. Now this title far surpasses that that is more common, the COSC certification. This is next level mainstream watchmaking. And true to the original purpose of the Railmaster, this watch absolutely shits on a magnetic field. The original Railmaster could withstand up to a thousand gauss. The Rolex Mill Gauss can withstand up to a thousand gauss. This Railmaster can withstand up to 15,000 gauss. 15,000 gauss. And that's not just part of some, uh, like, like some uh, marketing thing. This watch has been tested as part of that uh, Metas testing. They actually put this watch in a magnetic field of 15,000 gauss. So this can actually do it. This can walk the walk. And a watch's uh, movements and capability in, in that sense isn't something that immediately draws me to it. Uh, I, I think like a lot of us, we're drawn to the design, the aesthetics of a watch first. But I absolutely love the fact that that ability is inside this little chap. But anyway, that is enough of the geeky stuff. Let's talk about the design. Let's talk about the aesthetics. This piece is oozing testosterone. Everything about it is brushed. And I mean everything is brushed. Even the hands are brushed. And it's not just a light brushing to give it a bit of a satin feel. This stuff is has been carved out. It is quite amazing how deep 
the, the, the brush marks are, especially on the dial. The dial is actually black, but when you, it's, it's so heavily brushed that when you tilt it, it, it can be light gray. It can be light gray with a tint of bluey purple. It, you've got so many shades, but straight on, it is a deep, deep black. And it's a cool dial. It's, it's got character to it. And it's, it's not just straight and plain. It's, it's got something to show you. The case, the bracelet, these are brushed so heavily that the edges are actually sharp. It means business, and I, I like that. The faux patina. Now, this is something that's going to divide a lot of us, and I get it. I, I really do get it. But on a piece like this, which is a real nod to the original, I can't help but feel, had the loom been white, the dial would have been ruined. I really think the, uh, the typography, the layout, the brushiness, I think everything works with that faux patina. And it's not like it's useless faux patina either. It's, this is still super luminova. You're still gonna get your bright loom. It's still gonna be functional. It's just got that nice aesthetic to it. And for me, I, really, I, I kind of have to like it. Seeing as I, I, I put a fake patina on, uh, on my SKX. <laughs> kind of, I'm, I'm bored into that idea. <laughs> One thing that has to be mentioned about this watch is the case back. I love the case back. This thing is just a piece of art on its own. I absolutely love it. The, the amount of detail that's kind of gone into this engraving here, I'd, I assume it's engraving. I'd, I just think it looks absolutely fantastic. So since posting a teaser photo of this on my Instagram stories, at Bark and Jack, if you're not following already, uh, I've had a ton of messages of people asking me, should I buy a Railmaster or should I buy an Explorer? the 214270. Now I can't do a full comparison because I don't have the 214270. I've already got the 14270, which is a 36 millimeter rather than the 39 millimeter version. However, I can't help but feel that the Railmaster is a nicer watch. The dial certainly alone is far more interesting. It has far more character than the Explorer. However, what I will say is the dial is like that hipster that's in the vegan fair trade, not for profit, coffee shop in Shoreditch. He looks awesome, he looks cool, you might want to look like him. But what's going to happen in five years time? Is that fashion still going to be there? Is that style still going to be there? Now the Explorer, it's a lot more vanilla. It's a lot more normal. But I, I hate this phrase, I absolutely hate this phrase, but it is timeless. The design is timeless. And so come five years, come 10 years, come 20 years, that Explorer will still look good. I don't know what, and I, I, I could just be being unnecessarily picky about this, but I don't know what's gonna happen with styling around watches and whether the Railmaster is just gonna look dated and that faux patina just is gonna be a bit old hat. Two things that stand out for me about this watch that I dislike are the clasp and the size. So the clasp, I feel the clasp is a typical over-engineered clasp that should be on something like a dress watch. It shouldn't be on a very obvious tool watch like this. This would absolutely work for the suit. You could wear this with a tux. It would look, it would look awesome. But the clasp is just annoying. It, it requires thought to close it as opposed to just a quick flick of the fingers and, and, and getting that clasp locked. Another thing is the size. So this is 40 millimeters. I have small wrists, so I can rock a 34 millimeter watch. I often wear 36. So for me, 40 millimeters in this style of watch is, it feels big. And for me, it wears big. Um, uh, I'd have a Submariner, which is also 40 millimeters, but I feel that wears smaller than this piece here. And that could just be my style, but I kind of feel like Omega should have launched a 36 millimeter version and maybe a 38 millimeter version for those who like bigger watches. Uh, but that, as I say, that is just my style and it doesn't take away from the watch itself. As an overview, I'd say the Realmaster is an amazing everyday watch. It's incredibly versatile with its design and it is incredibly capable with its features both with its water resistance and its Gauss rating. I think, I think it'd be hard pushed to beat it, especially in a price for 3,600 pounds. That's quite a lot of watch for 3,600 quid. It's really quite amazing what they've done. I'm a big fan. So guys, that is my video on the Omega Seamaster Railmaster. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this piece. More importantly, let me know what you think about Faux Patina.
are you in the camp that likes it and appreciates the kind of vintage touch? Or are you in the camp of, if you want patina, get the real patina? I like it, I can't help but like it. I, I, I think it's cool. I've always liked vintage looking things. That's, that's why I like Fuji cameras. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. I think it's down here. Hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Check me out on Instagram, at Barkin Jack, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.